will of the American people, and on the other hand, of course, it's a potential dictator. Which is going to get us into trouble when we get to Abraham Lincoln. I believe that the word of one person is more than the words of few. If he's not strong, then how are you going to lead the people? We need uh, a, a president such as uh, the great Abraham Lincoln. The election of 1860 was a momentous one. With new winner-take-all rules, the front-runner won all the electoral votes in a given state. With four candidates in the race, Abraham Lincoln, a Republican known for his opposition to slavery, won the election with less than 40% of the popular vote. Lincoln was powerfully disliked by uh, probably the majority of the American people. He had to earn the confidence of the country. As soon as Lincoln gets elected as this dramatic minority president, this long suppressed issue of the, few, the status of slavery, which men of goodwill have been trying to push to the periphery so the country won't fall apart, is now at the center. And given the precedence of Andrew Jackson, the fact that Lincoln is now in the White House means that the South has reason to be concerned. The concern was that Lincoln would claim a mandate to end slavery. And so by the time of his inaugural in March 1861, seven southern states had seceded from the Union. But Lincoln didn't claim a popular mandate. Instead, referring to his constitutional duty to ensure that the laws be faithfully executed, he assumed unprecedented presidential powers. He prosecuted the war without congressional approval. He instituted harsh penalties for deserters from the army. And in a crackdown on agitators and suspected spies, he suspended the writ of habeas corpus. There's no more foundational right in a free society than habeas corpus, the right not to be held arbitrarily by the government. And he also instituted military tribunals and suspended, in many areas, the civil courts. Those actions were extremely controversial. One might say that the most dangerous presidents are our good presidents because they set precedents for expansive power that those with a more dangerous character can take advantage of. In many ways, Lincoln overreached. Here is a man who suspends habeas corpus, who many people think has assumed dictatorial powers. But what Lincoln had, which was so important at the moment he had the presidency, was a kind of an inner steel that said to him, the Union will be preserved and it will be preserved at, at any cost. Though Lincoln's priority was to preserve the Union, he knew that slavery was at the root of the crisis. Here was the flaw in America's democracy, an anti-democratic principle at the heart of the Constitution in direct contradiction to the Declaration of Independence. As the Civil War continued and the casualties mounted, Lincoln explored ways to end slavery on legal grounds. Lincoln always understood slavery as inconsistent with the Declaration of Independence, and he understood the Declaration as a statement of the highest American morality, the principles that were the basis of all good in this country. So to free the slaves while saving the Union was an ideal mix Although, of course, it was politically very difficult. No president could have dismantled an institution as ingrained as slavery was without first convincing the public that it was the right thing to do. And that required true democratic leadership. Lincoln understood where he was going, but he knew he couldn't get too far ahead of the people. That's what he meant when he said we're to realize these ideals as fast as circumstances allow. And the Civil War was a massive change of circumstances. It allowed a lot of development very rapidly. The Battle of Antietam on northern soil brought Lincoln a surge of popular support, which he used as his opportunity to act. On September 23, 1862, five days after the Union victory there, 
he issued an emergency measure aimed at crippling the Confederate war effort, the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. If you held a Gallup poll at that time and asked white people, north and south, should we emancipate the slaves, I don't know what the answer would have been. So here we have this very awe-inspiring and perplexing precedent of the president acting unilaterally in the name of we the people as commander-in-chief doing something which probably the country wasn't prepared for. The Emancipation Proclamation declared it the president's right in wartime to attack the institution of slavery. It called on Confederate slaves to rise up against their masters and it invited them to cross enemy lines to join the Union Army. Once black troops showed by their courage and commitment their dedication to their freedom and to the nation, it was all the more Lincoln's view that the meaning of the war came down to emancipation. On November 19, 1863, at Gettysburg, Lincoln spoke to the American people. He committed the country to a new kind of democracy, invoking a set of ideas as shining and original as those in the Declaration of Independence. Of the people, by the people, for the people, What's so profound about it is that it both expressed his constitutional vision as well as his moral one. Lincoln's great achievement shows that presidents can nudge and can exhort and can challenge and can slowly make clear uh, moral principles that perhaps hadn't initially been obvious. But he can never be heedless of public opinion. By 1864, public opinion had turned against Lincoln those who opposed emancipation and the endless war had gained support, and Lincoln's bid for a second term seemed doomed. 1864, things aren't looking too good for Lincoln. He could have said, well, you know, it's a war. That's what Winston Churchill did, and during the Second World War, there were no elections in Britain um, till after the war. Um, but he didn't, even though it wasn't at all clear to him that he was going to win. Lincoln's feeling about the election was that it had to be held to see what the people think. And for very simple but obvious reasons, uh, which is if, if you don't hold these elections that are really the foundation of the whole system, then in effect you don't have the Constitution and that's worth fighting for in the first place. The absolutely crucial act was to insist on regular elections and he puts his proposed 13th Amendment, which transforms this wartime Emancipation Proclamation into something that promises to be the law of the land in the platform of the Republican Party, and he wins. He won the election of 1864 decisively with 55% of the popular vote and swamped his opponent in the Electoral College. It was not until now that Lincoln claimed a mandate from the people a mandate to pursue the constitutional end of slavery. When Lincoln wins re-election, he calls a special session of Congress. Congress had failed to pass the 13th Amendment, then he calls them back into session saying, you know, again, a mandate claim. You know, the people have spoken on this and now's the time to act, and he gets them to do it. No president had ever sponsored a constitutional amendment. That had been Congress's domain. In a remarkable act, unprecedented, Abraham Lincoln signs the proposed 13th Amendment. And it's just at this moment when Lincoln signs the 13th Amendment before it goes out for ratification that he's signifying a great transformation in the status of uh, presidential leadership. The uh, 13th Amendment, which he gleefully signed, he said, this wraps the whole thing up. It's remarkable that they can participate in bringing about the changes that he did. The evolving view of Lincoln can be regarded as the maturing of the Union and of the nation with respect to the status of African Americans in the Union. Democratic leadership is leadership that does not simply seek power for the possessor, but seeks power in the name of furthering democratic ends. 
whether those ends are the inclusion of groups that have been left out of the democracy, whether they are recognition of the dignity of ordinary people, whether they are a commitment to educating people. And really in the story of the presidency and democracy, Lincoln is the supreme character. No one else has taught as Americans as much by his life and by his words what it means to be a democratic leader. After Abraham Lincoln, the presidency went into a period of decline. 